Okay, praise the Lord. Well, I've got a powerful word for you guys tonight. Um, a lot of revelation, a lot of things the Lord's been showing me. So um, I just want to go ahead and, and get right into the word and, um, and just share this with you guys, what we've got here. So oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We come before your word with expectant hearts, Lord. We come before your word with reverence, with adoration. Giving your word first place, Lord. Giving your word first place in our lives. We honor your word. Oh, we honor the mighty power of your word, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your presence. Father, we ask for open eyes and open ears to hear and to see everything that you want to expound in your word to us tonight. Let the light of your word penetrate our hearts with powerful, deep revelation into the truth of your word, the reality of your word the unchangeable nature of your word. We have open hearts and open minds to receive everything that you have for us tonight, Lord. Oh, oh thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just surrender this night to you. We submit this time to you right now. We turn it over to you. Let your will be done. Lord, think through my mind. Speak through me. Move through me. Have your will be done tonight, Lord. Have perfect rule and reign here tonight. We give you that permission. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. So, uh, uh, I feel like the Lord has been showing me so much about this. Uh, I don't know whether we'll get through all of this tonight or not. He, he just poured out so much here. So, again, I know you guys are believing with me um, for the utterance of the Lord and for him to just lead this perfectly in, in terms of where he wants to take this and what he wants to share um, and where he wants us to go in his word tonight because whew, he's poured out a lot. <clears throat> now, here's where I want to start, guys. I want to first go to 1 John chapter 5. And verse 4. First John chapter 5 and verse 4. And what we're going to talk about tonight is who you are. We're going to talk tonight about who you are, who God created you to be. So first John 5 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now, are you born of God? If you've been born again, yes, you are. So you are born of God. So that means if you are born of God, You have been born an overcomer. You have been born an overcomer. That's who you are. That's what God created you as. You, <laughs> what just, you, you don't even have to try to be it. You just are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You were born to be a winner. Watch this. You were born with the will to win. You were born with the will to win. The will to be an overcomer. The will to be a victor. The will to be a champion. That's what is inside of you. That's what is inside of you. That's who you were born 
That's who God created you as. Isn't that marvelous? You were born an overcomer. You don't even have to try to be it. You just are it. Okay, watch this. In, um, okay, now watch this. In Romans, I'm not sorry, Romans, uh, Revelation. In the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 7, chapter 2, verse 11, chapter 2, verse 17. Chapter 2, verse 26. Chapter 3, verse 5. Chapter 3, verse 12. Chapter 3, verse 21. In every single one of those scriptures, Jesus says, to him who overcomes. To him who overcomes. Seven times in the midst of two chapters, he said, to him who overcomes. Now that was in the letters to the churches, to the seven churches. And what he was saying is, I am looking for the overcomers. I am looking for the overcomers. It is the overcomers that are rewarded in the kingdom of God. That's his expectation of you. His expectation is for you to be an overcomer because that is who he created you to be. He built you with the will to win. He built you to dominate. He built you to be a ruler and to have dominion. That's who he created you to be. And if we want to be honest about it, any time that we are operating as anything less than an overcomer, than a champion, than a winner, than a victor, than a ruler, we're dishonoring his creation. We're dishonoring what he made us to be. But that's not us. That's not how we live. We live to honor him. And you will live the rest of your days as an overcomer. You will live the rest of your days as a champion. You will live the rest of your days as a total and absolute victor that walks and talks and speaks as one that has dominion, as one that dominates, as one that is a ruler. Because that is who he created you to be. Now watch this. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Of course, we talk about this scripture a lot. But I believe it's a major key for us to really understand our true identity. We have to really get a hold of who we are and who God made us to be. We have to get a hold of that. We, we need to have a deep, 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 deep revelation on who we are, on who he made us to be. And I believe we're going deeper into that tonight. We're going to walk away from this tonight with a far greater revelation and a far greater understanding of who he created us to be. And watch this, watch this, watch this. Why he created us. See, we have to know why we were created. If we're to walk out and fulfill our purpose in life, we have to know why we were created. We're going to get deep into that tonight. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Let's talk about Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Now, this, of course, is the story of creation. We know that. God goes through and he's... <clears throat> creating everything. He's creating the planets, the sun, the moon, the stars. He's creating the sea. And he's creating the birds and the animals and all those wonderful things. 
And then he gets to man. The wonderful creation of mankind. Ho, 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 ho! Woo! Thank you, Lord. And God said, What does that say? <laughs> and God said, Now, look, look, notice now, 10 times in this passage of scripture in the story of creation. Ten times it says, and God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. Why? 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 Because he wanted to make no mistake about it in terms of how he created and how he creates and how he expects us to create. He created by his words. He created everything by the power of his words. Verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, I've read a number of other translations that say, let us make man in our image, just like us. Just like us. Just like us. See, he made you just like him. Just like him. So let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay? And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Now I want you to see this, guys. This is so powerful, man. This hit me the other day and I was, oh man, this just, this just sent me flying. When God spoke and said, let us make man, really a better tr translation would be man be in our image. Just like it was light be and light was, it's man be in our image. He commanded us, he, he, he gave the order and we came into being. Now watch this. As soon as he says that, he then declares over man what he is and what he is to do. As soon as he creates man, the very first thing that he does is declares into him what he is and what he is to do. Wow. He says, let them have dominion. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and the cattle over the earth, over every creeping thing. Now watch this. Here's what he did. The very first thing when he created man was he spoke his word into man. Think about it. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says, And the Lord God, going into more detail about it, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Another translation says became a speaking spirit. Now watch this. When God spoke into man, that is when the breath of life went into man. <laughs> That's when the breath of life went into him. Why? 
John 6, 63, what does it say? It says, it says, Jesus is speaking. He says, listen, my words are spirit and they are life. So when God, that word, man be, man was, and when he spoke that, that word went into man and breathed the life of God into man and he became a living soul or a speaking spirit. He spoke the identity of man into him and carried in those words was the very breath the very life of god that went into man and <clears throat> brought him to life and then he goes on in verse 28 and he says and god blessed them so as soon as they were created he immediately his blessing upon them and in them. The very blessing of God he put upon them and in them immediately, and God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and, and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Now watch this. He immediately told them what they were to do. He immediately told them what they were to do. As soon as he created man, he knew who they were in terms of, you're created in our image, in our likeness, you're just like us. I mean, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He said, here's who you are, here's what you are to do. Here's who you are, here's what you are to do. Here's who you are, here's what you are to do. He immediately gave man an assignment. Oh, isn't that powerful? He immediately gave man his identity and his assignment. He could not have just given him his assignment because he needed to have his identity in order to fulfill the assignment. Oh, that's powerful. Boy, that's powerful. That's why you have to know who you are. You have to know who you are. Okay, now watch this. This is just kind of a side point, but I want you to take notice at verse 28, what it said there. It said, and God blessed them and said unto them. He did not just speak to Adam here. <laughs> you got to hear this. He did not just speak to Adam. He spoke to both of them. He blessed both of them. And he said to both of them, be fruitful, multiply, Replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion. The command wasn't just given to Adam. The command was given to Adam and Eve. Why? Because they were to be a team. They were intended, they were created to be a team, to fulfill this will of God together, to fulfill this plan of God together. They were a team. It wasn't just Adam. It was a team. They were to do it together. That's, listen to me now, that's the power of the husband and wife relationship. Man, the husband and wife are a team. The husband and wife are a team. The husband and wife are a team, according to God. That's how he created you. Okay, now, I want you to see this. Just go back. I just want to go back to this for a minute. When, when God said, 
will let us make man our image or man be in our image. I want you to recognize you were created by the word of God. It was his very word that created you. So you are a product of the word of God. That's why when you read the word of God, you are reading who you are. You are taking in your identity. Why? Because you were made from the word of God. from God himself. Is, is that just the most marvelous thing? You were created by the word of God. You are a product of the word of God. You are a product, watch this now. You are a product of God's faith. Let me even say this one, this is even more powerful. You are a manifestation of God's faith. <laughs> you are a walking manifestation of God's faith. You are a walking manifestation of God's faith. Created you with his faith. He first saw you in his heart and then he spoke you into existence. Wow. 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 Whew. Okay, let me talk about this for a minute. You know, in verse 3 of Genesis 1, where it says God created light, it says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, or it, more, the literal translation is light be, and light was. That light was not the sunshine. That light that he created was not the sunshine. Because the sun came later on. That came later on. The light that he created was the glory of God. And it covered the whole earth. The glory, when he created light, he created the glory. He released the glory of God and it covered. Now watch this. In Psalm chapter 8, verse 5, it says, And he crowned man with the glory of God. In fact, and it also quotes it in uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7. It says, And he crowned man with the glory and the honor of God. See, when he created man, he crowned him with the glory of God. You are crowned with the very glory of God. Now watch this. You know Romans uh, chapter 8, I believe it's verse 14 where it says, um, and all of creation awaits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, that, that doesn't just mean, you know, the manifestation of the sons of God as in this, you know, the sons of God just showing up. But it means the manifestation of the sons of God. In other words, that all of creation waits for the sons of God to be manifesting, to manifest. To manifest what? The glory of God. That's what all of creation is waiting for you to manifest the glory of God. The very glory of God. That's what all of creation is waiting for. For you to manifest the glory of God in your life. That's what he created you for, to manifest his glory. Okay. Glory to God. Okay, let me go into this here. Turn to Ephesians chapter 1.
we're going to look at verses um, 4 and 5. Okay, now, before we read this, just let me, let me reference back to Genesis 1 for a second. Because we know, I mean, we all know the story very well. But God goes through and he's creating. It was the sixth and final day when he created man. Right? So man was the very last thing that he created. The very last thing. It says, on the sixth day he created man. The seventh day he rested because his work was done. So man was the very last thing that he created. Now keep that in mind, okay? Verse 4. <clears throat> According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children, a more, in, the, in my, in my uh, margin here, it says as sons. A better translation would be having predestinated us as sons, not the adoption, uh, but as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. So you are accepted, first of all. You are accepted. Now, I want to go back to verse 4 here because I want you to see is this. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. He chose you before he created the world. Okay, so let me say it this way. Why was the earth created? Why did God create the world and the universe? Why did he create all this? He created it for you. He created it for you. Watch this. He dreamed you up in his heart. First. And then, after he had dreamed you up in his heart, he said, okay. What kind of a place do I want to create for my child to live? And he then went forth and began dreaming up the world and the entire universe. Watch this now, just for you, for a place for you to live. For a place, now watch this, for you to rule, for you to reign, for you to have dominion. He created the earth for man. That was his whole purpose for creating the earth. For not just the earth, the entire universe. He created the entire universe for man to rule over it, to have authority over it, to have dominion over it. Think about it. That's his level of love for you. That he loves you so much that he dreamed you up before he ever created the world. And he thought, what kind of a place would be suitable for my child to live in? What kind of a place would be 
glorious for them to have as their habitation, as their home, as, as their place to live. That's his level of love for you. He didn't create the earth and then as an afterthought, he created man. No, 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 no. Oh, man, this is so big, you guys. He created the earth for you, for you to dominate. Okay, look, um, let me just turn there. Uh, Psalm 24, verse 1. You can turn there if you like. Otherwise, I can just read it to you real quick. It just very simply says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Okay? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Okay? So the earth is the Lord's. Okay? We get that. But now go to Psalm 115 and verse 16. Or I can just read it to you as well. I'll just turn there quick. Uh, it says, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth has he given to the children of men. The earth has he given to the children of men. See, he gave the earth to mankind, to Adam and Eve to be an under ruler for him on the earth. He gave it to them and said, hey, you rule, you take, you reign, you have dominion over it, you replenish it, you be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. In other words, take authority over it, rule over it, subdue it, have dominion over it and over everything that's in it. See? But watch this. This, this, to me, now, this, when we start to understand it from this perspective, it, it, it takes the limits off of this thing because we realize, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He created the earth. He created the universe for us. When you start to comprehend it from that perspective, you can start to have more of an ownership mentality more of a rulership mentality more more of a, a a a mentality of dominion of dominating the earth because he gave it to you to rule and reign over it he did not give you the earth to be dominated by it he did not give you the earth to be dominated by the circumstances of the earth Yes, when Adam sinned and Eve, they turned this whole thing over to Satan. But Jesus came back and he restored the authority back to us. The dominion back to us. See, that's what he created you for. That's what he created you for. Okay, now watch this. Okay, I want to read this. I want to read this uh, scripture, the uh, Ephesians one four and five, out of the Rotherham translation. This this to me really opens this thing up for us to really get the true understanding here for what God was doing. According as He had. According as he made choice of us in him before the founding of a world. So again, he's saying he, made, he chose us. He made choice of us in him before founding the world. That we would be holy and blameless in his presence, in love, marking us out beforehand unto sonship. Through Jesus Christ for himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So what I want you to see here is this. His purpose for creating you was for sonship. Sonship. 
his purpose for create look he created the earth for you and the reason he created you was for sonship god desired to have a family he desired fellowship he desired communion he wanted someone he could relate to. And that's why he had to create us in his image, just like him. Because that was the only way. It was the only way. that we would be able to relate to him. To be like him. Can you relate to a dog? I mean, sure, you can love a dog and have some communion with a dog. But that dog can't talk back to you. You can't have true communion with your dog. And listen, I love dogs. I've had a dog my whole life. But you can't have true communion with a dog. You can only have true communion with something that's just like you. And so God created us just like him. God is a spirit and he made us as a spirit, just like him. With the ability to create with our words, just like him. With the ability to have dominion, just like him. And see, Satan knew that. And that's why he went after Adam. Because he knew that would be his way to hurt God deeply. Would be to get Adam to turn his authority of the earth over to him. And in so doing, committing high treason and as a result the life that God breathed into Adam and Eve turned from spiritual life to spiritual death and that perfect fellowship was broken Satan knew that would hurt God because that was his purpose for creating man, was to have fellowship with him. That was his purpose. Wow, man, this is so powerful. Oh, you guys, this is so powerful. This just rocks my mind. It just rocks my world. But of course, God didn't leave it there. He set up the plan of redemption for us. Here's what's really amazing. <clears throat> you know, I go to Genesis 126 a lot, 26 to 28, for us to get an understanding of who God created us to be. But when you really, oh, man, when you really start digging into this, when, when you really, st oh, when you really start getting into this, what you realize 
is when Jesus came back to take the authority back from Satan, he didn't just restore us to what was initial, initially originally created in the garden. the new creation was even better. And that's why 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Because it was new. It, it was like a new species that had never been seen before. It was even greater than the man that he created at the beginning with Adam and Eve. And that's what uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 45 to 49, that's what it talks about. It says, first was the, the natural, then, the, then was the spiritual, or first was the earthy, then was the supernatural. Well, here, let's just turn. I'll read it to you so you guys can see this. And so it was written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, meaning Jesus, was a, was a quickening spirit. And my margin says, a life-giving spirit. Jesus came as a life-giving spirit, and that's now what you are. Howbeit, that was not first, <clears throat> sorry, howbeit, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and then afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And in another part, it says that Jesus was the firstborn of many brethren. In other words, Jesus was the first, the first one to be born again when he rose from death. He was the first one to be that new creation. And now we're just like him. But now here's why it's even better. When, when, when Adam and Eve were created, they were given dominion over the earth, right? That's what we read, right? It says, have dominion over the earth. Subdue it, have dominion. But when Jesus came and he restored it, he didn't just give us back the authority over the earth. I'm going to read it to you. I talk about this scripture a lot but because I love it, but it's so powerful. But Matthew 28, 18 says this. It says, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So it wasn't just power over the earth anymore. Now it was power over heaven and over earth, both of them. And then he says to us, Go ye therefore, meaning, look, I've been given all the power and all the authority over heaven and earth, so now I'm sending you out. I am delegating my authority and my power to you, so now you go and have dominion. You go and spread the gospel. See, Adam and Eve had, had authority over the earth. We now have authority in heaven and in earth. That's why um, Matthew chapter 16, verse 19 says, and I, and I will give, and this is Jesus speaking, and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now watch this in the um, CEV translation. It says this. I will, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. 
I'm sorry, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And God in heaven will allow whatever you allow on earth. But he will not allow anything that you do not allow. See, we, we, we have so much more power over our lives than we realize. He, he's given it to us. He's given it to us. He says, listen, whatever you allow, God will allow. Whatever you don't allow, God will not allow. So if you don't tolerate poverty, if you will not allow poverty and lack to operate in your life, then God will not allow it either. If you will not allow the devil to harass you, then God will not allow the devil to harass you. He will not allow oppression if you will not allow it. See, he'll back your words. 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 And that's how we rule our circumstances, our world, all of it. That's how we rule it. That's how we have dominion. That's how we exercise our dominion is through our words. <clears throat> I was reading E.W. Kenyon's book, and he was talking about Adam when he was created. And he said, you know, Hebrews 11.3. No, I'm sorry, Hebrews 1, 3, gives us, probably gives us some good insight into how Adam ruled God's creation that he had, that, that God had given to him. He says, now this is speaking of Jesus, but remember, Jesus came back as the second Adam, the last Adam. So, so Jesus came back to, 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 to take the place of what Adam was. So he says, Jesus, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express, express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. And he said, that gives us some good insight into how Adam likely ruled God's creation. He said, let me, I think I wrote this down here. He said, um, he said, Adam ruled creation by his word. His voice was like the voice of his creator in its dominion over creation. That's what E.W. Kenyon said. Adam ruled his creation, God's creation, by his word. His voice was like the voice of his creator in its dominion over the creation. Why? Because God put his word into Adam and God breathed his life into Adam. So very likely when, when Adam spoke, it was just as if God himself were speaking. And when we take God's word and we get God's word into us, we keep putting his word into us. 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 We keep putting his word into us until his word dominates us. Then when we begin to speak, we begin to speak just as the voice of our creator. Because we were created in his image, just like him. And we've been given his word, and when we speak out his word, he backs it up, and he will not allow what we will not allow. And whatever we do allow, he will allow it. And we allow it by speaking those things into existence, by calling those things that be not as though they were, just like God did in the beginning when he spoke man into creation, when he spoke you into creation by his word. You are a product of the word of God. Oh, let me show you this. For, uh, 
what is that, First Peter? I believe it's First Peter one twenty three. Yes, 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 yes. First Peter one twenty three, talking about you being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Man, that lights me up. You were born by the word of God. You were born from the word of God. That's what makes you up. That's what makes up your substance of who you are. The very word of God. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I mean, we touched on this, but, but I did, I, man, I just wanted to say this too. This was just so powerful to me. I think we'll wrap up here. We'll, we'll end on this. Um, and if back to Ephesians uh, 1, verse 4 and 5 in that Rotherham, it says that he marked us out beforehand unto sonship through Jesus Christ for himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. You were created for God himself. He created you just for himself for himself, for communion with him, for, 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 for him to be able to hang out with you, to commune with you, to talk with you, to work with you, to, to, to partner with you. Watch this. For his pleasure. He created you for his pleasure. Remember 11, uh, Hebrews 11, 6. It says, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. So he created you for his pleasure. And what gives him pleasure is you walking by faith. It's you walking by faith. It's you walking by faith, living by faith, speaking by faith, acting by faith, thinking by faith. Glory to God. That's what gives him tremendous pleasure. Watch this. I'm going to take this a step further. What gives him the greatest pleasure it's for you to act like him. Because he is a faith God. He is a God of faith. He created you by faith. He created everything for you by faith. He created the world by faith and everything in it by faith. And what gives him the greatest pleasure is for you to live by faith just like him. For you to act like him, think like him, talk like him. That's what gives him tremendous pleasure. Because when you do that, you're walking with him, you're co-laboring with him, you're partnering with him, and we're doing it together. I mean, really, he's doing it all. But, he, but I mean, he is so amazing that he, that he just gives us so that we can have a little part in it too. So that we can be doing it together. Because we know, look, it's his word, it's his power, it's his spirit, it's his anointing, it's his everything. <laughs> but we get to partner with him. We get to speak his word and watch him go to work and watch things manifest right before our eyes. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. That's what I've got for you guys tonight. I pray that was a blessing uh, to your heart. I declare over you that you are coming into a greater understanding of your identity in Christ, your identity in God, your identity in who he made you to be. You are stepping into a greater reality of who he made you to be. You are stepping into a greater level of understanding, of revelation, of who he made you to be. And you are going to walk and talk and act and think like God. Think like the very God that created you. You're going to think like the faith God that he is, like the God of love that he is. That is what you are stepping into, a greater level of dominion and authority and power by the mighty word of God and by his spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord.